The Senate will come to order. I ask everyone present to please rise and repeat with me the Pledge of Allegiance. Joining us today to give our invocation is the Reverend Dr. Gene C. Romulus, Horeb Alliance Church and National Action Network, Network of West Hempstead. Good afternoon, everyone. Let's bow your head and pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this afternoon to give you glory and praise. We are honor you, God, we praise your name. We bless your name. We adore you. We glorify you, God. We thank you for this day that you give us, God, and you give us opportunity to be here and to pray in your behalf. God, be with us. Whatever that's going to do today here, let you take the control on everything, God, because you are God. You create man, and you give him knowledge to do whatever they have to do. We go to see, to visit the building. We see how beautiful thing that you allowed them to do. And you say that you go prepare a place for us, God, and that place, nobody see it yet. And no, no eyes could see that place. We thank you. We ask you, God, keep you and my, and when that day come, to go to live with you, and to be a bowl when the trumpet sound, we could hear that trumpet and we will be able to live with you, not for 70 or 80 or 90 years, but we will be with you forever and ever. We thank you for this day. We worship you, we adore you, God, and we ask you wisdom. Without your wisdom, we cannot do nothing. Help the, what they have to discuss today let anyone that discuss something for their own glory, but for your name be glorified. We thank you, we bless your name. Be with us, and we live our life to you. And we ask you, God, let us connect it with you. Because we, if we are unplug ourselves to you, we will walk in darkness. You are the light, and let us be a light. And whatever that we go, and the light that we have in us, and the ones, the ones that walk in darkness, and through us, they could see the light, and they will live with you forever. We thank you. We bless your name. We pray it's not because we're good, but it's the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost that we pray. Amen. May God bless you all. Thank you, Reverend. Thank you very much. Oh, very good. Reading of the journal. <clears throat> in Senate Sunday, June 15th, the Senate met pursuant to adjournment. The journal of Saturday, June 14th, is read and approved on motion. Senate adjourned. Without objection, the journal stands approved as read. Presentation of petitions. Messages from the Assembly. The Secretary will read. On page 15, Senator Laval moved to discharge from the Committee on Higher Education, Assembly Bill Number. 9103 and substitute the identical Senate Bill 6834, third reading calendar 439. On page 35, Senator Katchik moved to discharge from the Committee on Civil Service and Pensions, Assembly Bill number 7478B, and substitute the identical Senate Bill 5676B, third reading calendar 988. On page 39, Senator Hannon moved to discharge from the Committee on Finance, Assembly Bill number 5294A, and substitute the identical Senate Bill. Senate Bill 2538, third reading calendar 1065. On page 40, Senator Martins moved to discharge from the Committee on Veterans and Homeland Security, Assembly Bill 7430A, and substitute the identical Senate Bill 4768, third reading calendar 1072. On page 41, Senator Carlucci moved to discharge from the Committee on Finance, Assembly Bill number 8835A, and substitute the identical Senate Bill 6659A, third reading calendar 1082. On page 41, Senator Larkin moved to discharge from the Committee on Finance, Assembly Bill Number 8761C, and substitute the identical Senate Bill 7625B, third reading calendar 1091. Substitutions ordered. Messages from the Governor, reports of standing committees, 
reports of select committees, communications and reports from state officers, motions and resolutions. Senator Libis. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Would you call on Senator Valeski, Senator Generis, and then come back to me, please. Senator Valeski. Mr. President, I move to recommit my bill, Senate Bill 2161, calendar number 880, on the order of third reading to the Committee on Local Government with instructions to said committee to strike out the enacting clause. So ordered. On behalf of Senator Savino, on page 42, I offer the following amendments to calendar 1110, Senate Bill 3667C, and ask the said bill retain its place on the third reading calendar. So ordered. Also on behalf of Senator Savino, on page 9, I offer the following amendments to calendar 220, Senate Bill 4453, and ask that that bill retain its place on the third reading calendar. So ordered. Thank you. Senator Gene Harris. Thank you, Mr. President. On behalf of Senator Sanders, on page 46, I offer the following amendments to calendar 1303, Senate print 7418, and ask that said bill retain its place on third reading calendar. So ordered. On behalf of Senator Kruger, on page 41, I offer the following amendments to calendar 1089, Senate 7234A, and ask that said bill retain its place on third reading calendar. So ordered. And on behalf of Senator Diaz, I wish to call up uh, print 6364, recalled from the assembly, which is now at the desk. The Secretary will read. Calendar number 420 by Senator Diaz, Senate Print 6364, enact amend the executive law. I move to reconsider the vote by which the bill was passed. Call the roll on reconsideration. Call the roll on reconsideration. Adabo, DeFrancisco, Klein, Libeskel, Stewart, Cousin, Zeldin, ayes 52. I now offer the following amendments. Amendments are accepted. Senator Libes. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. On behalf of Senator Grisani, I move to recommit Senate Print 6877 calendar number 1298 uh, to the order of third reading. So ordered. And I guess I want uh, some to the committee on rules with instructions um, to said committee to strike out the enacting clause. So ordered. Kind of weird the way that's written. On behalf of Senator Marcelino, Mr. President, on page 26, I offer the following amendments to Calendar number 727, Senate print 4438, and asset said bill retain its place on the third reading calendar. So ordered. On behalf of Senator Lanza, I wish to call up his bill, Senate print 3600, uh, recall from the Assembly, which is now at the desk. Secretary Reed. Calendar number 579 by Senator Lanza, Senate print 3600, and act amend the criminal procedure law. I now move to reconsider the vote by which this bill was passed. Call the roll on reconsideration. Adabo, D. Francisco, Klein, Lewis, Skell, Stewart, Cousin, Zeldin, I 52. Uh, Mr. President, I offer up the following amendments. The amendments are accepted. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'd like to uh, uh, amend the, uh, the following bills and report the third reading calendar. Uh, Senator Seward, page 13, calendar 385, Senate print 5376A. Senator Boyle, page 14, calendar number 398, Senate print 4988A. Senator Laval, page 22. Calendar 624, Senate Print 6630A. Uh, Senator De Francisco, page 23. Calendar 665, Senate Print 3852A. Senator Bonasek, 23. Uh, calendar number 670, 7266 is the Senate Print. Senator O'Mara, uh, page 29. Calendar 814, Senate Print 7273A. Senator De Francisco would be page 36. Calendar 995, Senate print 7331. Senator Little, page 37. Calendar 1021, Senate print 7643. Senator Flanagan, page 38. Se um, calendar 1034, Senate print 7227A. Senator Laval, page 47. Calendar 1348, Senate print 6942. Senator Grisanti. Uh, page 31, calendar 912, Senate print 7344C. Senator Maziars, page 34, calendar 977, Senate print 7312A. Mr. President, I move that all these bills retain their place in the order of third reading. So ordered. Mr. President, this time could we have the non controversial reading of the calendar? Secretary Reed. Calendar number 45 by Senator Martin, Senate Print 6210, an act to authorize. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Adabo, DeFrancisco, Klein, Libeskel, Stewart, Cousin, Zeldin, 
Announce the result. Ayes 51, nays 1. Senator Bonasek recorded in the negative. The bill is passed. Calendar number 100 by Senator Griffo, Senate Print 3468, an act amend the public health law. Read the last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco, Klein, Libeskella, Stewart, Cousin, Zeldin. Ayes 52. The bill is passed. Calendar number 213 by Senator Robach, Senate Print 2510A, an act amend the penal law. Read the last section. Section 5, this act should take effect on the 1st of November. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco, Klein, Libeskella, Stewart, Cousin, Zeldin. Announce the result. Ayes 51, nays 1. Senator Montgomery recorded in the negative. The bill is passed. Calendar number 332 by Senator Lanza, Senate Print 3599, an act amend the public authorities law. Read the last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, Francisco, Klein, Libeskella, Stewart, Cousin, Zeldin. Ayes 51, nays 1. Senator DeFrancisco recorded in the negative. The bill is passed. Calendar number 361 by Senator Lanza, Senate Print 3965A, an act amend the penal law. Read the last section. Section 3, this act should take effect on the 30th day. Call the roll. Adabo, DeFrancisco, Klein, Libeskella, Stewart, Cousin, Zeldin. Ayes 49, nays 3, Senators DeFrancisco, Montgomery, and Perkins recorded the negative. The bill is passed. Gallon number 367 by Senator Young, Senate Print 2204A, an act, amend the, not, an act to amend the corrections law. Read the last section. Section 7, this act to take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, DeFrancisco, Klein, Lewis, Gallo, Stewart, Cudden, Zeldin. Ayes 52. The bill is passed. Calendar number 439 by Memory Assembly Glick, Assembly Print 9103, an act amend Chapter 135 of the Laws of 2002. Read the last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, DeFrancisco, Klein, Lewis, Skelos, Stewart, Cousin, Zeldin. Ayes 52. The bill is passed. Calendar number 450 by Senator Martin, Senate Print 6831, an act authorized. Read the last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libis Skelos, Stuart Cousin Zeldin. Ayes 51, nays 2, Senators Bonasek and O'Mara recorded the negative. The bill is passed. Calendar number 646 by Senator Ritchie, Senate Print 1946A, an act amend the vehicle and traffic law. The bill is laid aside. Calendar number 750 by Senator Carlucci, Senate Print 1982C, an act amend the penal law. Read the last section. Section 4, this act should take effect on the 1st of November. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libis Skell, Stewart Cousin, Zeldin. The bill is passed. Ayes 53. Gallon number 773 by Senator Mazier, Senate Print 6963, an act amend the public authorities law. Read the last section. Section 3, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libis Skell, Stewart Cousin, Zeldin. Ayes 48, nays 5, Senators Hoyleman, Kruger, Montgomery, Parker, and Perkins recorded the negative. The bill is passed. Gallon number 786 by Senator Golden, Senator from 4979C, an act amend the retirement social security law. Read the last section. Section 4, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, Francisco, Klein, Libis, Skell, Stewart, Cousins, Zeldin. Ayes 53. The bill is passed. Calendar number 801 by Senator Golden, Senate Print 7176A, an act amend the retirement social security law. Read the last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libis Skelos, Stewart Cousins, Zeldin. Ayes 53. The bill is passed. Calendar number 803 by Senator Ball, Senate Print 2798, an act amend the agricultural markets law. Read the last section. Section 2. The bill is laid aside for the day. Calendar number 886 by Senator Grisanti, Senate Print 6212, an act amend the village law. Read the last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libis Skelos, Stuart Cousin, Zeldin. Ayes 53. The bill is passed. Calendar number 941 by Senator Savino, Senate Print 3683, an act amend the tax law. Read the last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libis Skelos, Stuart Cousin, Zeldin. 
Ayes 50, nays 3, Senators Diaz, Kruger, and Montgomery recorded in the negative. The bill is passed. Calendar number 948 by Senator Hannon, Senate Print 5258, an act to amend the public health law. Read the last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco, Klein, Livis, Skell, Stewart, Cudden, Zeldin. Ayes 53. The bill is passed. Calendar number 966 by Senator Martin, Senate Print 7351. And act amend the economic development law. Read the last section. Section three, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libis Skellis, Stuart Cousins, Zeldin. Ayes 53. The bill is passed. Calendar number 971 by Senator Ritchie, Senate Print 4200. And act amend the tax law. Read the last section. Section two, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libis Skellis, Stuart Cousins, Zeldin. Ayes 53. The bill is passed. Calendar number 976 by Senator Gallivan, Senate Print 7219, an act amend the public officer's law. Read the last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libis Skell, Stuart Cudden, Zeldin. Ayes 53. The bill is passed. Calendar number 988 by member of the Assembly, Santa Barbara, Assembly Print 7478B, an act to allow. There's a home room message at the desk. Read the last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libis Skell, Stuart Cousins, Zeldin. Ayes 53. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1022 by Senator Gallivan, Senate Print 98, and act amend the social services law. Note that calendar 1021 was high. Note that calendar 1021 was high. It was amended today. Read the last section. Yeah. Section 2, this act should take effect on the 60th day. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libis Skell, Stuart Cousins, Zeldin. Ayes 52, nays 1, Senator Perkins recorded in the negative. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1065 by Member of the Assembly Gunther, Assembly Print 5294A, an act amend the public health law. Read the last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libis Skell, Stuart Cousins, Zeldin. Ayes 53. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1068 by Senator Adabo, Senate Print 3392A, an act amend the environmental conservation law. Read the last section. Section 3, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libis Skell, Stuart Cousins, Zeldin. Ayes 53. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1072 by Member of the Assembly, Wines Wiesenberg. Assembly Print 7438, Act Amend the Tax Law. Read the last section. Section 3, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libis Skell, Stuart Cousins, Zeldin. Senator Martin to explain his vote. I rise to um, thank my colleagues in supporting this bill. This bill creates the Homeless Veterans Assistance Fund to be administered. Uh, by the New York State Department of Veterans Affairs. It allows for a checkoff on tax returns where people can make donations that go specifically towards helping our returning heroes who are homeless. You know, it's one of the shames of society that we have veterans who go off to fight, who put their lives on the line, and when they come home, one in eight homeless veterans, one in eight homeless people in this country are veterans they deserve better. This bill will allow our state to commit resources and funds specifically to help homeless veter veterans. I want to thank my uh, colleagues and I want to thank Senator Skelos for uh, allowing for this bill to move forward. Certainly it is appropriate and just that we support our veterans. Mr. President, I vote aye. Senator Martin's in the affirmative. Announce the results. Ayes 53. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1073 by Senator Grisanti, Senator from 4920A, an act amend the tax law. Read the last section. Section 6, <laughs> it's that should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libis Skell, Stuart Cousin, Zeldin. Ayes 53. The bill is passed. <clears throat> Relation to calendar 1073, ayes 52, nays 1, Senator Hoyleman, recorded in the negative. The bill is passed. 
Calendar number 1082 by Member Assembly Gunther, Assembly Print 8835A, an act to amend the mental hygiene law. Read the last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, De Francisco, Klein, Livis, Skello, Stewart, Cousin, Zeldin. Ayes 53. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1091 by Member of the Assembly Scofus, Assembly Print 8761C, an act to amend the state finance law. Read the last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, De Francisco, Klein, Libis, Skello, Stewart, Cousin, Zeldin. In relation to calendar 1091, those recorded in the negative are Senators DeLon, Hoyleman, Kruger, Montgomery, Parker, Perkins, and Squadron. Ayes 46 and A7. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1117 by Senator Klein, Senate Print 6600, an act to amend the executive law. Read the last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, D. Francisco Klein, Livis Skeller, Stewart Cousins, Zeldin. Ayes 49, nays 4, Senators Ball, DeLon, Perkins, and Zeldin recorded in the negative. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1130 by Senator Farley, Senate Print 7238A, in act in relation to authorizing. There's a home rule message at the desk. Read the last section. Section 5, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, D. Francisco, Klein, Libis, Skell, Stewart, Cousins, Zeldin. Ayes 53. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1181 by Senator Stavisky, Senate Print 640A, enactment of the vehicle and traffic law. Read the last section. Section 2, this act should take effect on the 90th day. Call the roll. Adabo, De Francisco, Klein, Livis, Skell, Stewart, Cousins, Zeldin. Ayes 53. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1201 by Senator Young, Senate Print 2225D, enactment of the mental hygiene law. Read the last section. Section 10, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, De Francisco, Klein, Livis, Skello, Stewart, Cousins, Zeldin. Senator Young to explain her vote. Thank you, Mr. Mr. President, to explain my vote. Today we are passing a bill that is long overdue, and that's to finally make Kendra's Law permanent and to make sure that people who are violent or dangerous or mentally ill get the treatment that they need so that we can avoid the types of tragedies such as the one that just afflicted New York State in New York City on June 1st. Two little children, P.J. Avito, age six, Michaela Capers, age seven, got on an elevator. They were on their way to get ice cream, and they were attacked by the Brooklyn Butcher. His name is Daniel St. Hubert. He had just been released two weeks prior from a state correctional facility. He was shown to be violent. He was shown to be dangerous. He was a known schizophrenic. And yet, the state dumped him out on the streets without appropriate evaluation or follow-up. Poor little PJ is dead right now. Michaela is recovering from 16 stab wounds, and we need to take action as a legislature to make sure that people who are a danger to themselves or others get the appropriate treatment, and if we can get this through the assembly, then we can avoid so many similar tragedies down the road. So I urge the assembly to pass this legislation, and I want to thank my colleagues for supporting it today. By supporting this bill, you are saving lives. Senator Young to be recorded in the affirmative. Announce the results. Ayes 52, nays 2, Senators Kruger and Katchik recorded in the negative. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1308 by Senator Golan, Senate Print 7628A, enacted under the Retirement Social Security Law. Read the last section. Section 3, this act should take effect immediately. 
Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco, Klein, Livis, Skeller, Stewart, Cousins, Zeldin. Perkins. Ayes 53, nays 1, Senator Perkins recorded in the negative. The bill is passed. Uh, calendar 1348 is high. It was amended today. Mr. President, Lewis. before we go uh, to the controversial reading, I'd like to return to motions and resolutions, please. Motions and resolutions? Uh, at this time, I'd like to take up as a previously adopted resolution uh, by Senator Nazolio. Uh, it would be resolution number 5749. Uh, could we please have it read in its entirety? And then I would ask that you call on Senator Nazolio. Secretary will read. Legislative Resolution Number 5749 by Senator Nazolio, mourning the death of Humphrey Donahue, distinguished citizen and devoted member of his community. Whereas, it is the sense of this legislative body to pay tribute to citizens of the state of New York whose life work and civic endeavor serve to enhance the quality of life in their communities in the great state of New York. And whereas, Humphrey Donahue of Geneva, New York, died peacefully in his home on Sunday, October 27, 2013, at the age of 84. And or as born February 10, 1929, to Edward and Mary Gavin Donahue, Humphrey Donahue was a graduate of DeSales High School, a member of St. Stephen's Church, attended Seton Hall University, and was a staff sergeant in the United States Army. And or as on January 23, 1954, Humphrey Donahue married his wife, Carolyn Jensen, and in 1958, they moved to Rochester, New York, where he worked as a member of Local 33 of the International Association of Bridge, Structural, and Ornamental Iron Workers, AFL-CIO, of which he remained a member for over 50 years. And whereas, Humphrey accepted an appointment in 1969 as a field representative in New York State for the National AFL-CIO, and was subsequently appointed to the esteemed New York City-based position of Director of Region 7, for the AFL-CIO, during which time he was instrumental in union organiza organiza organizing, negotiating contracts, and supporting legislation and political activity in the, in the interests of working men and women. And whereas Humphrey Donahue distinguished himself in his profession with sincere dedication to his lifelong commitment to the advocacy of the rights of workers and his firm belief in the dignity of work and the strength of the family, which, substan which substantially contribute to the welfare of his community. And whereas, in addition, his efforts were recognized with awards received from the American Red Cross, the National AFL-CIO Community Services Program, the Harry Van Arsdale Jr. Labor History Project, the National Safety Council, the International Association of Machinists and Aerospace Workers, the Mammoth Ocean County's Labor Council AFL-CIO, Niagara Orleans Labor Council, AFL-CIO, Rochester and Vicinity Labor Council, AFL-CIO, and the New York State, AFL-CIO. And whereas Humphrey Donahue's commitment to excellence and his spirit of humanity carried over into all fields of enterprise, including charitable and civic endeavors. And whereas, as a member of the American Legion, Humphrey Donahue served in the Color Guard and was manager of the Winnick Post Drum and Bugle Corps, in 1998, named Irishman of the Year, in 2002 he received his 50-year certificate of continuous membership in the American Legion. And whereas active within his community, Humphrey Donahue was a member of the American Arbitration Association, the Loyal League of Yiddish Sons of Aaron, and the Danish Brotherhood. And whereas Humphrey Donahue was survived by his wife of 59 years, Carolyn, daughters Karen Donahue and Linda H. Donahue, brothers Edward, Jack, Michael, brother-in-law Robert Jensen, longtime friends Jim and Mary Dean, and many dear cousins, nieces, nephews, and predeceased by his sister Margaret Hogan, brothers William Robert Donahue and Joseph Donahue, and nephews Peter Donahue and Greg Hogan. And whereas, armed with the humanistic spirit, imbued with a sense of compassion, and comforted by a loving family, Humphrey Donahue leaves behind a legacy which will long endure the passage of time and will remain as a comforting memory to all he served and befriended. Now, therefore, be it resolved that this legislative body pause in its deliberations to mourn the death of Henry, the death of Humphrey Donahue, distinguished citizen and devoted member of his community, and be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution suitably engrossed be transmitted to the family of Humphrey Donahue. Senator Nazolio. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, my colleagues on the resolution, 
I stand with great pride as this body recognizes a genuine contributor to life as we know it in New York State, one who uh, is from a small town uh, with a great big heart, a wonderful family, and worked tirelessly on behalf of the organization that he loved, and that's the AFL-CIO. Uh, that Humphrey Donahue was a man who uh, was connected to many of this uh, body, uh, as well as the State Assembly, who was very active uh, in issues of importance uh, to working men and women throughout New York State. Uh, I was pleased to know Humphrey on a number of levels. Uh, the first and foremost was his tireless advocacy on behalf of uh, the working man's agenda, working woman's agenda for the state. Uh, I was also very pleased uh, that uh, our families uh, were linked uh, through uh, my uh, deceased uh, br brother-in-law, Greg Hogan, uh, who is Humphrey's nephew. Uh, that uh, the Donahue family is legendary uh, for its expanse, for its uh, involvement in community matters, uh, for just their love of life and uh, pursuit of uh, everything that's good about this great country. Uh, that I'm very pleased that uh, two of Humphrey's daughters and his niece uh, could be here today, uh, Linda Donahue and Karen Donahue, uh, Humphrey's daughters, as well as Jennifer Hannon, who is a niece and Humphrey's goddaughter. Uh, that I'm also uh, very honored that, and I know Humphrey would be too, uh, that uh, one of his colleagues uh, who worked together very closely through the years, uh, Mario Salento, as president of the New York State AFL-CIO, is here today because of his uh, love of, Henry, of Humphrey, his uh, working with Humphrey, uh, and I know that uh, they had a, a great long working relationship and friendship through the years. Also in the gallery I know is Mike Needle, who is our legislative representative of the AFL-CIO. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is important to recognize those individuals who have given gr a great deal uh, to their communities, uh, to their families, and to their organizations. Uh, Humphrey Donahue is uh, a uh, A-plus in each of those categories. He loved his family. He did a great work for his community in the Central Finger Lakes, and his organization uh, provided him a, a platform to work uh, for working men and women across New York State. Uh, his loss uh, is felt by many. Uh, his impact is felt by many. And uh, to that, Mr. President, uh, that's why this resolution uh, honoring Humphrey Donahue today is so fitting. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Senator. And uh, I'd like to thank the uh, Humphrey Donahue's friends and family for joining us here today and note that this resolution was previously adopted on June 10th. Senator Libis. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, Senator Katchik has resolution number 5642. Uh, it was taken up uh, previously and adopted. If we could have it read in its entirety and call on Senator Katchik. Secretary will read. Legislative resolution number 5642 by Senator Katchik. Honoring Grace Utajenwa upon the occasion of her designation as recipient of the Distinguished Service Award by Fulton, Fulton Montgomery Community College. Whereas, it is the sense of this legislative body to act in accord with its long-standing traditions, honoring the youth of today and leaders of tomorrow, whose character and achievements best exemplify the ideals and values cherished by this great state and nation. Whereas, attendant to such concern and in full accord with its long-standing traditions, this legislative body is justly proud to honor Grace Ruta Genwa upon the occasion of her designation as recipient of the Distinguished Service Award by Fulton, Montgom Fulton Montgomery Community College. Whereas Grace Ruta Genwa is receiving this esteemed honor for her volunteerism as a student ambassador, welcoming new students to the Johnstown campus and conducting campus tours and for sharing her survival survivor story at local high schools, churches, and the United Nations. And whereas Grace Ruta Genoa earned her associate degree at Fulton Montgomery Community College this year, marking yet another big step along an extraordinary journey for a survivor who endured unspeakable horrors of genocide in Rwanda in which her parents and three siblings were killed. And whereas 
Grace Ruta Genwa, 22 years old, maintained a 3.0 GPA. With English being her fifth language, she proudly accepted her diploma from Robin DeVito, a mother of two who became her guardian and surrogate mother several years ago and who raised her as her own. And whereas friends dubbed Ruta Genwa Amazing Grace after learning the atrocity she endured. Grace was the youngest of four children raised on her family's prosperous farm in, in Nazao in southern Rwanda. And whereas her parents were well-educated members of the minority Tutsi, they employed farmhands who were Hutus, the majority ethnic group. In the spring of 1994, ethnic tensions boiled over and ended in Africa's worst genocide in modern times. And whereas Grace Ruta Genwa met Robin DeVito, who took her into her home in Duanesburg, and in 2011, she graduated from Duanesburg High School with a Regents Diploma and Scholarship Awards. And whereas Grace Ruta Genwa was the subject of a 2011 Times Union profile, Robin DeVito and Grace moved in 2012 to an apartment in Amsterdam, New York. And whereas an example of incredible perseverance, Grace Ruta Genwa truly worked hard Currently, she works at St. Mary's Hospital in Amsterdam as a patient assistant in the radiology department and plans to continue her education in, at Fulton Montgomery Community College, studying radiology with a goal of becoming a radiology technician. And whereas it is the sense of this legislative body that when individuals with such noble aims and accomplishments are brought to our attention, they should be celebrated and recognized by all citizens of this great empire state. Now, therefore, be it resolved that this legislative body pause in its deliberations to honor Grace Ruta Genoa upon the occasion of her designation as recipient of the Distinguished Service Award by Fulton Montgomery Community College and, be, and best wishes for future or per, of purposeful success and well-being. And be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution suitably engrossed be transmitted to Grace Ruta Genoa. Senator Katchik. Thank you, Mr. President. I rise today to give a special recognition to one of my constituents who we've just read about, Grace Wudaganwa, and she is with us here in the chamber today. Could, would you mind standing, Grace? Grace is this extraordinary young woman who's had uh, an incredible journey to get here to the floor of the Senate. Grace is joined in the balcony uh, by her adoptive mother, Robin DeVito, and also um, her coach from Fulton Montgomery Community College, Kevin Jones, and also one of her earlier teachers, Anne Marie Collins, and her husband, Jim, who helped tutor Grace when she was in high school, and also Grace's ESL teacher, Kathy Sasso Karasis, is here, and several of Grace's friends, including Kristen Brown and Taiwo Ikundayo. We all couldn't be prouder of Grace and her accomplishments, and I wanted her to be here today so that we could give her that recognition. Grace, as you have heard, um, ex experienced incredible atrocities due to the Rwanda massacre. One of the last acts of Grace's mother was to hide her daughter under her skirt to protect her from their attackers. A neighbor found Grace and provided shelter for her until she could be safely transported out of the country, and they hid this three-year-old little girl in a large suitcase to get her to safety. She was very young and orphaned and had to endure uh, incredible unsanitary and overcrowded conditions in camps in Congo and Burundi, but she eventually was relocated back to Rwanda, and as an excellent student and determined athlete, she was selected to play with a traveling Rwanda basketball team and when the team competed in a basketball tournament in New Jersey, she and a friend decided to seek and were given political asylum. As luck would have it, she knew another African student who attended Fulton Montgomery Community College, which has a number of international students and a strong English as a second language uh, program. And it's there that she met Robin DeVito, who uh, took Grace, her and her family took Grace in and raised her as their own. So she was able to graduate from Duanesburg High School with a Regents Diploma and continued to play basketball, not only at Duanesburg but also at FMCC. And I just want to note what Grace wrote in her Duanesburg High School yearbook in honor of Robin. 
she wrote to give Robin um, a sense of gratitude to her for her love and support for providing her with a loving home. And she wrote, you are my role model and I will live, with my, I will live my life in honor of the example of love you have taught me. I am often inspired by the people I come across every day in my district. I could not be more inspired by Grace and the work she has done and the accomplishments she's been able to make here in this country. And I wanted to recognize her on the floor of the Senate and wish her well in her future endeavors. Thank you. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you for joining us, Grace. Uh, congratulations on this well-deserved honor, and thank you for sharing your story of courage. This resolution was previously adopted on June 10th. Uh, Senator Libis. President, this time, uh, let me fix my microphone here. I know everybody wants to hear me. We have Senator Hannon. I wish to call up his bill 7125, recalled from the assembly, but it's now at the desk. Secretary will read. Calendar number 1126 by Senator Hannon, Senate Print 7125, enacted under the public health law. Mm, I now move to reconsider the vote by which this bill is passed. Call the roll on reconsideration. Adabo D. Francisco, Klein, Libis, Scala, Stewart, Cutton, Zeldin, ayes 54. Mr. President, I offer up the following amendments. The amendments are accepted. Mr. President, at this time I'd like to call an immediate meeting of the Rules Committee in room 332. Immediate okay. meeting of the Rules Committee in room 332. There'll be an immediate meeting of the Rules Committee in room 332. No. Got it. Senate will stand at ease. Committee at the desk, we have a read at this time. Secretary will read. Senator Skelter and Committee on Rules reports the following bills. Senate Print 20 by Senator Diaz, an act amend the penal law. Senate 48 by Senator Peralta, an act amend the penal law. Senate 383 by Senator Diaz, an act amend the state finance law. Senate 847 by Senator Parker, an act amend the economic development law. That's Senate 973 by Senator Lewis, an act amend the highway law. Senate 1109D by Senator Maziar, an act amend the mental hygiene law. Senate 1172 by Senator Robach, an act to amend the alcoholic beverage control law. Senate 1591C by Senator Grisanti, an act to amend the general business law. Senate 1685 by Senator Zeldin, an act to amend the election law. Senate 1885C by Senator Bonasek, an act to amend the town law. Senate 2255 by Senator Klein, an act to amend the education law. Senate 3297A by Senator O'Mara, an act to amend the tax law. Senate 3622 by Senator Lanza, an act to amend the criminal procedure law. Senate 3956C by Senator Grisanti, an act to amend the tax law. Senate 4332 by Senator Young, an act to amend the agriculture and markets law. Senate 4654A by Senator Golan, an act to amend the public authorities law. Senate 4719B by Senator Lanza, an act to amend the executive law. Senate 4797 by Senator Carlucci, an act to amend the public health law. Senate 4810 by Senator Martins, an act to amend the real property tax law. Senate 4877 by Senator Griffo, an act to amend Chapter 912 of the laws of 1920. Senate 5188 by Senator Gallivan, an act to amend the penal law. Senate 5228A by Senator Carlucci, an act to amend the mental hygiene law. Senate 5872 by Senator Savino, an act to amend the labor law. Senate 5875 by Senator Little, an act to amend the executive law. Senate 5876 by Senator Robach, an act to amend the real property law. Senate 5898 by Senator Felder, an act requiring. Senate 5955A by Senator Ball, an act to amend the vehicle and traffic law. Senate 5961 by Senator Marchone, an act to amend the vehicle and traffic law. Senate 6154 by Senator Avello, Avella, an act to amend the administrative code of the city of New York. Senate 6298 by Senator DeFrancisco, an act to amend the penal law. Senate 6349 by Senator Lanza, an act to amend the administrative code of the city of New York. Senate 6555A by Senator Goldman, an act to amend the economic development law. Senate 6696A by Senator Klein, an act to amend the public health law. Senate 6715 by Senator Marchone, an act to amend the election law. 
Senate 6717A by Senator Martins, enact amend the tax law. Senate 6806 by Senator Grisanti, enact amend the social services law. Senate 6875 by Senator Griffo, enact amend the social services law. Senate 7037 by Senator Ritchie, enact amend the agriculture and markets law. Senate 7055 by Senator Grisanti, enact amend the social services law. Senate 7147 by Senator Felder, enact amend the general business law. Senate 7183A by Senator Gold, enact amend Chapter 537 of the laws of 2008. Senate 7261 by Senator Klein, enact to amend the administrative code of the city of New York. Senate 7370 by Senator Martins, enact to amend the election law. Senate 7435 by Senator Laval, enact to amend Chapter 21 of the laws of 2011. Senate 7466 by Senator Klein, enact to amend the real property tax law. Senate 7473 by Senator Klein, enact to amend the administrative code of the city of New York. Senate 7635 by Senator DeFrancisco, an act granting. Senate 7644 by Senator Marcelino, an act to authorize. Senate 7646 by Senator DeFrancisco, an act to authorize. Senate 7720 by Senator Seward, an act to amend the criminal procedure law. Senate 7777 by Senator Carlucci, an act in relation to authorizing. Senate 7786 by Senator Larkin, an act to amend the criminal procedure law. Senate 7839 by Senator Larkin, an act to amend the retirement and social security law. Senate 7840 by Senator Golan, an act to amend the civil service law. Senate 7845 by Senator Bonasek, an act in relation to terms. Senate 7852 by Senator Young, an act to amend the public health law. All bills reported direct to third reading. Senator Libis. Uh, I move to accept the report of the Rules Committee. All in favor of accepting the re report of the Rules Committee, signify by, say, say, by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Protecting. The report is uh, adopted. Uh, Mr. President, can we uh, go back to read our messages from the Assembly, please? Messages from the Assembly? <laughs> Secretary will read. Senator Mazier has moved to discharge from the Committee on Finance, Assembly Bill Number 8452, and substitute the identical bill, Senate Bill 1109D, 30 and calendar 1372. Senator Klein moved to discharge from the Committee on Finance, Assembly Bill Number 151A and substitute for identical Senate Bill Number 2255, third reading calendar 1377. Senator Lanza moved to discharge the Committee on Veterans Homeland Security, Assembly Bill Number 6530B, and substitute for the identical Senate Bill 4719B, third reading calendar 1383. Senator Martins moved to discharge the Committee on Veterans and Homeland Security, Assembly Bill Number 6215, and substitute for the identical Senate Bill 4810, third reading calendar 1385. Senator Carlucci moved to discharge from the Committee on Finance, Assembly Bill Number 7721A, and substitute the identical Senate Bill 5228A, 30 and calendar 1388. Senator Ball moved to discharge from the Committee on Finance, Assembly Bill Number 8231A, and substitute the identical Senate Bill Number 5955A, 30 and calendar 1393. Senator Lanza moved to discharge from the Committee on Cities, Assembly Bill Number 364, and substitute the identical Senate Bill Number 6349, 30 and calendar 1397. Senator Marchone moved to discharge from the Committee on Elections, Assembly Bill Number 5075, and substitute the identical Senate Bill 6715, 30 and calendar 1400. Senator Grisanti moved to discharge from the Committee on Social Services, Assembly Bill Number 891, 8918, and substitute the identical Senate Bill 6806, 30 and calendar 1402. Senator Griffo moved to discharge from the Committee on Children and Families, Assembly Bill Number 8474, and substitute the identical Senate Bill Number 6875, 30 and calendar 1403. Senator Ritchie moved to discharge from the Committee on Agriculture, Assembly Bill Number 9118, and substitute the identical Senate Bill Number 7037, 13, third reading calendar 1404. Senator Felder moved to discharge from the Committee on Consumer Protection, Assembly Bill Number 9116, and substitute the identical Senate Bill 7147, third reading calendar 1406. Senator Martins moved to discharge from the Committee on Elections, Assembly Bill number 1230, and substitute the identical Senate Bill 7370, third reading calendar 1409. Senator Laval moved to discharge from the Committee on Higher Education, Assembly Bill number 9715, and substitute the identical Senate Bill 7435, third reading calendar 1410. And Senator Klein moved to discharge from the Committee on Cities, Assembly Bill number 9170, 
and substitute the identical Senate Bill number 7473, third reading calendar 1412. Substitutions ordered. Senator Libis. Uh, Mr. President, this time could we do the non-controversial reading of sub Senate Supplemental Calendar 50A, please? Secretary will read. Apologize. The Senate will stand at ease. The Senate will come to order. The Secretary will read. Calendar number 1367 by Senator Diaz, Senate Print 20, an act amend the penal law. Read the last section. Section 3, this act should take effect on the 1st of November. Call the roll. Adabo, DeFrancisco, Klein, Libis, Skella, Stewart, Cudden, Zeldin. Ayes 54, nays 2, Senators Montgomery and Perkins recorded in the negative. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1368 by Senator Peralta, Senator Print 48, and that amend the penal law. Read the last section. Section 4, this act to take effect on the 1st of November. Call the roll. Adabo, DeFrancisco, Klein, Libis, Skella, Stewart, Cudden, Zeldin. Ayes 
Ayes 53, nays 3, Senators Montgomery, Parker, and Parker, Perkins record in the negative. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1369 by Senator Diaz, Senate Print 383, enact amend the state finance law. Read the last section. Section 2, this has to take effect on the 30th day. Call the roll. Adabo, DeFrancisco, Klein, Litteskello, Stewart, Cousins, Zeldin. Ayes 56. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1370 by Senator Parker, Senate Print 847, enact amend the economic development law. Read the last section. Section 2, this has to take effect on the 90th day. Call the roll. Adabo, DeFrancisco, Klein, Libeskell, Stewart, Cudden, Zeldin. Ayes 56. The bill is passed. Gallon number 1371 by Senator Libis, Senate Print 973, enact amend the highway law. Read the last section. Section 2, this act to take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, DeFrancisco, Klein, Libeskell, Stewart, Cudden, Zeldin. Ayes 56. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1372 by Member of the Assembly Gunther, Assembly Print 8452, enact amend the mental hygiene law. Read the last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, DeFrancisco, Klein, Libis, Skell, Stewart, Cudden, Zeldin. Ayes 56. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1373 by Senator Robach, Senate Print 1172, enact amend the alcoholic beverage control law. Read the last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, DeFrancisco, Klein, Libis, Skell, Stewart, Cudden, Zeldin. Ayes 56. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1374 by Senator Grisanti, Senate Print 1591C, enact amend the general business law. Read the last section. Section 6, the statute take effect on the 1st of September. Call the roll. Adabo, DeFrancisco, Klein, Libeskell, Stewart, Cousins, Zeldin. Ayes 54, nays 2, Senators Ball and Marchon recorded in the negative. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1375 by Senator Zeldin, Senate Print 1685, enact amend the election law. Read the last section. Section 3, this has to take effect on the 120th day. Call the roll. Adapo, DeFrancisco, Klein, Libeskell, Stewart, Cousins, Zeldin. Ayes 56. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1376 by Senator Bonasek, Senate Print 1885C, enact amend the town law. Read the last section. Section 5, this has to take effect on the 120th day. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Livis Skell, Stewart, Cudden, Zeldin. Ayes 56. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1377 by Memory Assembly Nolan, Assembly Print 151A, enact amend the education law. Read the last section. Section 2, this has to take effect on the 180th day. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Livis Skell, Stewart, Cudden, Zeldin. Ayes 56. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1378 by Senator O'Mara, Senate Print 3297A, and act amend the tax law. Read the last section. Section 10, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, DeFrancisco, Klein, Livis, Skell, Stewart, Cousins, Zeldin. Senator Kruger to explain her vote. Thank you, Mr. President. I rise to explain my vote no on this bill. While it seems very admirable to be proposing all these reductions in taxes for volunteer uh, incentives for volunteer fire and other professionals around the state. It has a price tag estimated to be $70 million, and these kinds of bills should be done within the budget because, frankly, if we were to pass this into law right now, we would be obligated to come up with $70 million worth of savings within the budget or $70 million in new taxes, which I don't think any of us are prepared to do between now and Thursday. I'll vote no, Mr. President. Senator Kruger to be recorded in the negative. Announce the results. Ayes 53, nays 3, Senators Kruger, Rivera, and Sanders recorded in the negative. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1379 by Senator Lanza, Senate Print 3622, enact amend the criminal procedure law. Read the last section. Section 3, this has to take effect on the 60th day. Call the roll. Adabo, DeFrancisco, Klein, Libis, Skell, Stewart, Cudden, Zeldin. Ayes 55, nays 1, Senator Perkins recorded in the negative. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1380 by Senator Grisanti, Senate Print 3956C, enact amend the tax law. Read the last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, DeFrancisco, Klein, Libis, Skell, Stewart, Cudden, Zeldin. Ayes 56. Ayes 56. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1381 by Senator Young, Senate Print 4332, enact amend the agriculture markets law. Read the last section. Section 3, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, DeFrancisco, Klein, Libis, Skell, Stewart, Cudden, Zeldin. Ayes 56. 
The bill is passed. Calendar number 1382 by Senator Golan, Senate Print 4654A, enactment of the Public Authorities Law. Read the last section. Section 4, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, D. Francisco, Klein, Libeskell, Stewart, Cousin, Zeldin. Ayes 56. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1383 by member of Assembly Kuzik, Assembly Print 6530B, enact amend the executive law. Read the last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, D. Francisco, Klein, Libeskell, Stewart, Cousin, Zeldin. Ayes 56. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1384 by Senator Carlucci, Senate Print 4797, enact amend the public health law. Read the last section. Section 3, this act should take effect on the 120th day. Call the roll. Adabo, D. Francisco, Klein, Libeskell, Stewart, Cousin, Zeldin. Ayes 55, nays 1, Senator Zeldin recorded in the negative. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1385, by member of Assembly Ramos, Assembly Print 6215, Act Amendment the Real Property Tax Law. Read the last section. Section 4, this has to take effect on the 120th day. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libeskell, Stewart, Cousin Zeldin. Ayes 56. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1386, by Senator Griffo, Senator Print 4877. And I amend Chapter 912, the laws of 1920. Read the last section. Section 4, this has to take effect on the 90th day. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libeskell, Stewart, Cousin Zeldin. Senator Hoyman to explain his vote. Thank you, Mr. President. I rise to explain my vote. I do appreciate the sponsor uh, attempting to move uh, amateur uh, mixed martial arts uh, out of the shadows and into regulation, as this bill does. Uh, but I do also think that we uh, are not going far enough in protecting the health and safety and welfare of amateur fighters. Namely, they should be wearing headgear. Uh, and we've seen in other sports the rising incidence of injuries to the brain uh, and long-term health consequences because of uh, those injuries. And therefore, Mr. President, I'll be voting in the negative. Thank you. I'm meant to be recorded in the negative. Senator Kruger to explain her vote. Thank you, Mr. President. I share my colleagues' points. I will be voting yes for this bill because it's better than nothing, and nothing is what we have right now. What is very disturbing is the reports coming in about the dangers and violence associated with the amateur mixed martial arts events happening throughout the state. And there's really nothing amateur about them, except that apparently everybody makes money except the fighters. There have even been reports of activities, official amateur activities, of children as young as six years old being involved in cage fighting matches. So again, I won't vote no on this bill, because at least it's a step forward for the state um, to finally take, but I hope that actually upon looking at this sport, the State Athletic Commission will immediately move to outlaw these kinds of activities at the amateur level because they are so, so dangerous. Thank you, Mr. President. To yes vote. Mr. Kruger to be recorded in the affirmative. Uh, any other senators wishing to explain their vote? Seeing none, announce the results. Ayes 52, nays 4, Senators Diaz, Hoyleman, Laval, and Perkins recorded the negative. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1387 by Senator Gallivan, Senator Print 5188, enact amend the penal law. Read the last section. Section 3, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, D. Francisco, Klein, Libeskell, Stewart, Cudden, Zeldin. Ayes 55, nays 1, Senator Montgomery recorded the negative. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1388 by Memory Assembly Gunther, Assembly Print 7721A, an act to amend the mental hygiene law. Read the last section. Section 2, this act to take effect on the 120th day. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libeskell, Stewart, Cudden, Zeldin. Ayes 56. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1389 by Senator Savino, Senate Print 5872, an act to amend the labor law. Read the last section. Section 5, this act to take effect on the 90th day. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libeskell, Stewart, Cousin, Zeldin. Ayes 56. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1390 by Senator Little, Senate Print 5875, an act amend the executive law. Read the last section. Section 6, this act should take effect on the 90th day. 
Call the roll. Adabo De Francisco Klein, Libby Scala, Stewart Cousins, Zeldin. Senator Little to explain her vote. Thank you, Mr. President, um, and thank you to all my colleagues for voting for this bill. This bill amends the executive law in relation to discriminatory practices because of familiar status. And what it means by this is that you could not discriminate in choosing an employee based upon the fact that one had children and perhaps if was single had more responsibilities for those children than the other who was single with no children or married who had a partner who was willing to take on a lot of those responsibilities. <coughs> we all know that this happens. We also all know that many single parents have to work and yet they do need to tend to their children when they're sick when they have school visits, when they have an emergency that happens that needs their attention. And they can be the best workers that anyone can have. So this way we prohibit discrimination against them based upon the fact that they have responsibilities at home. Thank you very much for voting for this. I vote aye. Recorded in the affirmative. Announce the results. Ayes 56. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1391 okay. by Senator Robach, Senator Print 5876, enactment of the real property law. Lay it aside. Calendar number 1392 by Senator Felder, Senator Print 5890A, an act requiring. Read the last section. Section 2 of this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libis Skelos, Stuart Cousins, Zeldin. Ayes 56. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1393 by Member of the Assembly Sweeney, Assembly Print 8231A, an act amend the vehicle and traffic law. Read the last section. Section 3, this act should take effect on the 30th day. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libis Scala, Stewart Cousins, Zeldin. Ayes 56. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1394 by Senator Marchon, Senator Print 5961, an act amend the vehicle and traffic law. Read the last section. Section 3, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libis Scala, Stewart Cousins, Zeldin. Ayes 56. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1395 by Senator Avella, Senate Print 6154, and act amend the Administrative Code of the City of New York. Read the last section. Section 3, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libis Scala, Stewart Cousins, Zeldin. Senator Kruger to explain her vote. Thank you, Mr. President. You know, it's always important to really look through these bills because on the surface, why wouldn't we want to do away with a minimum um, monthly or mo minimum daily cost for water? Well, apparently here's why, according to the memo of opposition from the city of New York, one, because they have bonds out on the water authority. Um, changing this law would actually put the city in a position where they violated their fiduciary responsibility to their bondholders, and many constituents of all of ours are in fact bondholders. So I'm not sure why we'd want to pass a law that would result in the city of New York violating its bond agreements on anything. And two, according to the city of New York, if we, this bill were to become law, while some people would see a reduction in their water bill. The 75% of us who this law wouldn't apply to would see an increase in the water bill to make up for it. So it's not a reduction overall in water bills for people who live in the city of New York. It's a shifting of a portion of the cost from an existing population, approximately 25% of the water bill payers transferring those costs to the 75% other of us. So I don't really think this proves to be that great a deal when you look at it. The city of New York still can't afford to lose the $30 million in revenue. It still has a fiduciary responsibility to the bondholders for the bonds that exist. And maybe I would like the 25% more than I would like the 75% if I knew them by name and address, but I don't think I really want to pass a law that simply transfers costs from one group of people to another without knowing much more detail. I'll vote no, Mr. President. Senator uh, Kruger to be recorded in the negative. Senator Serrano? Okay. Speaking? Uh, announce the results.
Relation to calendar 1395, those recorded in the negative are Senators DeFrancisco, Gibson, Kruger, Little, Montgomery, Perkins, Rivera, Sanders, and Serrano. Ayes 47, nays 9. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1396 by Senator DeFrancisco, Senate Print 6298, Enact Amendment Penal Law. Read the last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Adabo, D. Francisco, Klein, Libeskel, Stewart, Cousin, Zeldin. Ayes 56. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1397 by member of Assembly Dinowitz. Assembly print 364, an act amend the administrative code of the city of New York. Read the last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, D. Francisco, Klein, Libeskel, Stewart, Cousin, Zeldin. Ayes 56, nay, or ayes 54, nays 2. Senators Montgomery and Parker recorded in the negative. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1398 by Senator Goldman, Senate Print 6555A, an act amend the economic development law. Read the last section. Section 3, this act should take effect on the 1st of September. Call the roll. Adabo, D. Francisco, Klein, Libeskel, Stewart, Cousin, Zeldin. Ayes 56. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1399 by Senator Klein, Senate Print 6696A, enacted in the public health law. Read the last section. Section 3, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, D. Francisco, Klein, Libeskel, Stewart, Cousin, Zeldin. Ayes 56. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1400 by Member of Assembly Millman, Assembly Print 5075, enacted in the election law. The, the bill is laid aside. Calendar number 1401 by Senator Martin, Senate Print 6717A, enact amend the tax law. Read the last section. Section 5, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, D. Francisco, Klein, Libeskel, Stewart, Cousin, Zeldin. Ayes 56. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1402 by Member of Assembly People Stokes, Assembly Print 8918, enact amend the social services law. Read the last section. Section 2, this act should take effect on the 1st of January. Call the roll. Adabo, D. Francisco, Klein, Lewis, Skell, Stewart, Cousin, Zeldin. Ayes 56. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1403, a memory of Assembly Rosick, Assembly Print 8474, enact on the Social Services Law. Read the last section. Section 3, this has to take effect on the 180th day. Call the roll. Adabo, D. Francisco, Klein, Lewis, Skell, Stewart, Cousin, Zeldin. Ayes 56. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1404 by Member of the Assembly McGee, Assembly Print 9118, enacted in the Agricultural Markets Law. Read the last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, D. Francisco, Klein, Libeskel, Stewart, Cousin, Zeldin. Ayes 56. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1405 by Senator Grisanti, Senate Print 7055, enacted in the Social Services Law. Read the last section. Section 2, this act should take effect on the 1st of January. Call the roll. Adabo, D. Francisco, Klein, Libeskel, Stewart, Cousin, Zeldin. Ayes 56. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1406 by Member of the Assembly, Samanowitz, Assembly Print 9116, enacted by the General Business Law. Read the last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, D. Francisco, Klein, Libeskel, Stewart, Cousin, Zeldin. Ayes 56. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1407 by Senator Golden, Senate Print 7183A, enacted in Chapter 537 of the Laws of 2008. Read the last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, D. Francisco, Klein, Lewis, Skell, Stewart, Cousin, Zeldin. Ayes 56. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1408 by Senator Klein, Senate Print 7261, enacted in the Administrative Code of the City of New York. There's no home rule message at the desk. The bill will be laid aside for the day. Calendar number 1409 by Member of the Assembly Abenanti, Assembly Print 1230, an act to amend the election law. Read the last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, D. Francisco, Klein, Libeskel, Stewart, Cousin, Zeldin. Ayes 56. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1410 by Member of the Assembly Glick, Assembly Print 9715, an act to amend Chapter 21 of the Laws of 2011. Read the last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, D. Francisco, Klein, Lewis, Skell, Stewart, Cousin, Zeldin. Ayes 56. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1411 by Senator Klein, Senate Print 7466, enacted by the Real Property Tax Law. Read the last section. Section 3, the statute take effect July 1, 2015. Call the roll. Adabo, D. Francisco, Klein, Lewis, Skell, Stewart, Cousin, Zeldin. 
Ayes 55, nays 1, Senator Gibson recorded in the negative. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1412, by member of Assembly Court, Assembly Print 9170, an act amending the Administrative Code of the City of New York. Read the last section. Section 2, this act should take effect on the 270th day. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Livis Scalis, Stewart Cousin Zeldin. Ayes 55, nays 1, Senator Gibson recorded in the negative. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1413 by Senator D. Francisco, Senate Print 7635, an act granting. There is a home rule message at the desk. Uh, read the last section. Section 3, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco, Klein, Livis, Kellis, Stewart, Cousin, Zeldin. Ayes 56. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1414 by Senator Marcelino, Senate Print 7644, an act authorized. There is a home rule message at the desk. Read the last section. Section 3, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco, Klein, Livis, Kellis, Stewart, Cousin, Zeldin. Ayes 56. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1415 by Senator D. Francisco, Senate Print 7646, an act authorized. Read the last section. Section 3, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco, Klein, Lewis, Skell, Stewart, Cousin, Zeldin. Ayes 56. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1416 by Senator Seward, Senate Print 7720, an act amend the criminal procedure law. Read the last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco, Klein, Lewis, Skell, Stewart, Cousin, Zeldin. Ayes 53, nays 3, Senators Hoyleman, Kruger, and Perkins recorded in the negative. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1417 by Senator Carlucci, Senate Print 7777, an act in relation to authorizing. Read the last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco, Klein, Livis, Skelos, Stewart, Cousins, Zeldin. Ayes 56. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1418 by Senator Larkin, Senate Print 7786, an act amend the criminal procedure law. Read the last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Livis Skelos, Stewart Cousins, Zeldin. Ayes 52, nays 4, Senators Hoyleman, Kruger, Montgomery, and Perkins recorded the negative. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1419 by Senator Larkin, Senate Print 7839, Act Amend the Retirement Social Security Law. Read the last section. Section 3, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco, Klein, Livis, Skell, Stewart, Cousin, Zeldin. Ayes 56. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1420 by Senator Golden, Senate Print 7840, Act Amend the Civil Service Law. Read the last section. Section 12, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Livis Skell, Stewart Cousin Zeldin. Ayes 56. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1421 by Senator Bonasek, Senate Print 7845, an act in relation to terms. Read the last section. Section 11, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Livis Skell, Stewart Cousin Zeldin. Ayes 56. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1423 by Senator Young, Senate Print 7852. An act amend the public health law. Read the last section. Section 7, this act should take effect January 1, 2015. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Livis Skell, Stewart Cousin Zeldin. Ayes 56. The bill is passed. That completes the reading of the non controversial calendar. Senator Livis. Uh, Mr. President, I want to take up the controversial calendar on these supplemental 50A, but I'd like to take up calendar number 1400 first. The Secretary will ring the bell. No, Marcia. Senator Libis. Well, we're waiting to get started there. I'd like to return to motions for a second. Return to motions. On behalf of Senator Marcelino, on page 21, I offer the following amendment to skeleton number 605, Senate Print 5315A, and ask that said bill retain its place on the third reading calendar. So ordered.
Calendar Secretary Reid, cal calendar 1400. Calendar number 1400 by Member Assembly Milliman, Assembly Print 5075, an act amend the election law. Senator, explanation from Senator Kruger. Senator Kruger is re requesting an explanation. Senator Marcion. Thank you. Um, this bill simply would not allow a candidate whose name appears on the ballot to act as a poll wi watcher within that district. Three, Mr. President, if the sponsor would yield. Yes. Senator Marcion. Thank you. Yields. So I'm, I know it, it differs by different sections of the state of, of who's on a poll on a ballot at any given time. If this became law, would it mean that any person who's running for a county committee slot for their specific party could not be a poll watcher? If, um, take the liberty of responding, that if that poll watcher, um, if that county committee person was in a primary for that seat because that's the only way that name would appear on the ballot, then they would not be able to be a poll watcher in the district while their name appears on the ballot. Through you, Mr. President, the sponsor would continue to yield? Yes. Thank you. Would the same apply if, that, if a group of people were listed as judicial delegates or a judicial delegate slate, which is how we do this in my city? They also, none of them could be poll watchers? Any person whose name appears on the ballot for any position would not be able to act as a poll watcher in the district in which their name appears on the ballot. Through you, Mr. President, on the bill. Senator Kruger on the bill. I appreciate the um, sponsor's answers to my questions. I must admit, when you first look at the bill, you think, all right, so if Liz Kruger is running for the Senate, perhaps Liz Kruger ought not be a poll watcher at her own poll sites. Although, of course, existing law already would be explicitly preventing me from electioneering or challenging um, inappropriate behaviors because we already have a series of law that stop candidates from doing inappropriate things to intimidate or impact um, what goes on in their polling sites. So I must admit, I first thought, well, candidates for the elected office, Congress, the governor, state senate, the assembly, I get that. But then I realized it would apply to people who are simply trying to be elected to be their county um, party uh, representatives, which we can have large numbers of in any given district. We can have one for one or two for each ED within any given district. It would apply to people attempting to be simply judicial delegates to party judicial conventions. It could apply to people um, trying to become district leaders or state committee people for their various parties, and that at that level, you might actually be ruling out almost every local activist involved in political process um, or election day activities from actually being a poll watcher. And I actually think, well, I understand the sponsor's goal that we certainly don't want people to be intimidating voters, intimidating election workers, that when you think about how many people could be prevented from being poll watchers who are in fact the most involved in the electoral process in their districts, the people who are the ones we count on to do the hard work of making sure the democratic process, small d, takes place appropriately in our state, that we could be writing off almost everyone who might currently be playing these roles in our district. And I have not heard, and I did a little research today, um, that there's any record of these people 
um, in fact, being found to be inappropriate when they are poll watchers. There were no reports of people running for judicial delegate, people running for a county committee slot, attempting to intimidate voters or inappropriately direct voters or electioneer in the polling sites. So personally, I think the bill overreaches in how many people this law would apply to. I think we would actually be sorry if it became law because we'd realize all these committed, good, volunteer um, activists in our communities who are not looking for paid electoral positions or full-time electoral positions or even positions that most of the public thinks of as electoral positions would be prevented from doing exactly what they do now and they actually do a good job of helping make sure in all parties, in all districts, that the rules are being followed and small d democracy is successfully taking place the vast majority of the time in the vast majority of polling states in the site, polling sites in the state. Um, so I think this bill overreaches in the universe it would cover and I'll be voting no. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator. See, seeing no other senators wishing to speak, uh, debate is closed and the secretary will ring the bell. Read the last section. Read the last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, De Francisco, Klein, Libeskell, Stuart, Cousin, Zeldin. Senator Marcion to explain her vote. President, 
I rise just to uh, further explain uh, this bill and my position on it. And I would encourage my colleagues to vote yes. This has already been approved in the Assembly. Um, as uh, Senator Kruger spoke earlier, um, you know I've been a committee person in my, my, uh, my respective town for 35 years. If someone wanted to run against me, they would run against me in a Republican primary, not a general election. And then my name is no longer there. If you were a Democrat and you were a committee person, they would run against you in a Democrat primary because you're only going for a seat within your respective party. This by no means is something that would preclude our committee people from being able to act as poll watchers in a general election. This is a good common sense bill that says those of us who are elected, who go into a polling place, already have an influence on people who come in and vote when we don't even say anything. This is a, a, a good way, a good common sense way to say we don't belong in the polls as poll watchers when our name appears on that bill. And I would encourage my colleagues to vote yes. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator, Senator Marchione to be recorded in the affirmative. Announce the results. The ratio in the calendar 1,400. Those recorded in the negative are Senators Boyle, Kruger, Parker, and Perkins. Absent from voting, Senator O'Mara. Ayes 51, nays 4. The bill is passed. Senator could, we, could we please take up calendar number 1391 by Senator Robot? Secretary will read. Calendar number 1391 by Senator Robach, Senate Print 5876, enacted under real property law. Read the last section. Oh, explanation requested. Senator Robach. Yes, Mr. President. This is a piece of legislation which very much uh, similar to legislation we passed previously. Uh, banning discrimination in the workplace of victims of domestic violence would similarly ban that in housing. Uh, for those of us who work with advocates and have worked on this issue, uh, unfortunately, it's often too many times true. Senator Marcelino. I can't hear what's going on. Could we just get some order in the House, please? The Senate will come to order. Um, well, let me just start very quickly. This bill would uh, impact the um, housing law, similar to the bill we passed previously in this House, which would ban discrimination against victims of domestic violence in the workplace. Uh, often we know that um, the perpetrators of this crime will go to great lengths to try and make the victim's life um, re-victimized or make it difficult for them to move on, and oftentimes, um, if people are made aware, unfortunately, sometimes of the situation, they're less likely or more reluctant to rent uh, apartments or other things. I've worked on this bill uh, with Action, our Alternatives for Battered Women, a group out of Rochester for several years now, and uh, other advocates. And I think this will be one more step in uh, combating and ending the scourge of domestic violence in New York. Senator Kruger. Mr. President, on the bill. On the bill, Senator. Thank you. Thank the sponsor for his explanation. So this is the third bill in a row that involves trying to decrease um, discrimination against women in some capacity. We had the differential pay because of sex bill. We had the discriminatory practice because of familial status and now we have discrimination in domestic violence and housing. There is a lot of discrimination against women in New York State law. Now, I don't object to this bill, a portion of this bill, which is prohibit housing discrimination against victims of domestic violence, as the sponsor just explained. But in fact, this bill is a version of a bill that actually had moved through this House multiple times that also, in the other version, included prohibiting housing discrimination based on lawful source of income 
as opposed to this bill simply studying the question of whether women are being discriminated against based on their source of income. My city of New York has actually passed the better version of the bill requiring that you cannot discriminate based on source of income, including employment, child support, alimony, social security, disability assistance, federal, state, or local public assistance, or housing and sex assistance, including Section 8 vouchers. That once upon a time was a bill that moved through both houses and unfortunately was vetoed in 2010 incorrectly because of technical issues with the, with the domestic violence definition not objecting to the much broader categories of housing that women should not suffer discrimination under our law. I was absent Thursday because I had a death in my family when two other bills involving women and discrimination passed this house. Maybe we'll see more. There's a package of all 10 bills proposing changes in decreasing discrimination against women in New York State law. It has passed the assembly. It goes by the shorthand women's equality agenda. And yet, I gather from comments I heard from Thursday when I was not able to be here that there continues to be the argument that we can't do the full 10, that we can only select a few of the ways that women are discriminated against in New York State law and call it a day and call it a year. And I'm here to say it's not acceptable, Mr. President. When women's lives are at risk, when women end up having to leave the state of New York to get health care because we still have laws on our books that don't allow the law of this country, the federal law of this country, to be the law of New York State. It is not acceptable. I am not voting against these bills here today. I am voting for these bills. But I'm here to say half a loaf is not acceptable. The concept that there are women in the state. Senator Francisco, why do you rise? Uh, I wondered if the uh, uh, Senator Kruger would yield to a question. I would like to finish my statement and then I would be happy to yield to the senator. Thank you. The concept that women in the state, unlike men, would have their health care decisions challenged and not protect, be protected by the law of the state. The concept that women in this state find that in some circumstances they actually have to leave the state to search for doctors to provide them health care services that they put their lives at risk because having to leave the state, having to find a provider in another state, having to travel there can add one, two, three days before they can actually get these health care services. This is unacceptable in the 21st century. New York State must have laws that make explicit that women's reproductive health rights are protected by our statutes. They should not be refused services. They should not have to go county by county because some counties have far less services the speaker than others. Germain, S Senator the, Libis, is the Speaker Germain to the bill on the floor. Senator, could you please? Through you, Mr. Speaker. President, I believe we am. We're talking about a series of bills that are trying to end discrimination against women. We're speaking under of our Senator, laws. we're speaking on one bill, the present bill. Again, this bill is specific to domestic violence against women. Thank you, Ms. President. Senator Kruger answered the question. Thank you. Through you, Mr. President, to continue. Domestic violence often ends up with women finding themselves in reproductive health situations they did not choose. Domestic violence is often associated with sexual assault in the home. Senator, please keep your comments germane to the president. I believe domestic violence is germane to this bill as the sponsor, Senator Robach, explained. And domestic violence, if you look at the research, often correlates to women who are victims of domestic violence being prevented from getting the health care that they need in a timely manner. 
It often translates into sexual assault against the woman's will, which can translate into unwanted pregnancies. And in fact, there's a great deal of scientific correlation between being the victim of domestic violence and being able to access in a timely manner the kind of health care that you need. That is added to in our state because we don't have the right protections in place in our statutes for reproductive health as we don't have the right statutes in place for domestic violence. And again, as I pointed out, the Senator's bill helps with that but it doesn't address the totality of issues that victims of domestic violence can find themselves in over and over again. In fact, domestic violence can correlate to employment discrimination because the research shows that people who feel their right to domestically, um, to cause domestic violence also don't want their victims to feel economically independent and able to leave. So they try to negatively impact their ability to move into and stay in the workforce. They try to make sure they don't have the economic resources to move on somewhere else. They try to prevent them from making their own decisions about pregnancy and childbearing. So it all is one issue. It's all one mechanism to try to make sure our state law protects women, whether in their home, in their workplace. And again, fundamentally, if the women of the state don't have access to the kind of health care they need without discrimination, upon request, in every county, under every circumstance, we have flunked the test of protecting victims of domestic violence, of protecting women in the state. I hope in the next few days we can see all 10 bills that have been discussed in the context of being one set of issues moved to the floor of this House and passed. I will vote for this bill. Thank you, Mr. President. Yes. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I, excuse me. I'm happy to answer Senator DeFrancisco's question. Senator, you indicated that 50% of the loaf was not good enough. How about 60%? Senator For you, Davis. Mr. President, no. 100% of the loaf is needed. As I said, they all are interactive. If a victim of domestic violence can't get the reproductive health services she needs, we are not addressing the needs of victims of domestic violence. Uh, would you yield to another question? Certainly. Uh, by voting yes today, like you say you're going to, does that mean you're in favor of this bill? As I've said, it's a weaker version than I believe we should be voting upon. We had stronger versions passed this House before. So there is a portion of this bill, the portion that explicitly says that you cannot discriminate against victims of domestic violence in housing that I am happy to vote for, but it is missing the other sections that it used to have. And rather than be also explicitly prohibiting discrimination based on lawful source of income, there we're only studying the question. So I'm not satisfied with that. I would prefer a stronger bill. Uh, but you're voting yes? Yes, sir. I said okay. that. Well, may, would you should yield to another question? Senator, will you yield? Certainly. Now, I don't believe you were present when we voted on the bill concerning human trafficking last week. Uh, uh, do you know if you were recorded as a yes on that particular vote? One second. I um, yes, I did check in and then leave for a funeral okay. of my uncle. No, that's fine. Uh, would you would she yield to another question? Senator Kruger? Certainly. Does that yes from last week, does that mean that you think it's important for this state to have a law like the law you voted yes on to prohibit sex trafficking and to make substantially greater penalties for sex trafficking. Through you, Mr. President, I certainly think it is important for the state of New York to have stronger laws to protect victims of sex trafficking. Interestingly, <coughs> excuse me, sex trafficking it is another crime that directly correlates to access to reproductive health for women, because in fact, women who are sex trafficked who have their rights and freedoms taken away from them are absolutely 
most likely to be victims of not being able to get the kind of reproductive health care they need in a timely way. Their office being forced to stay in physical facilities they don't wish to. They don't have often insurance coverage or the right to go to doctors and often find themselves having to go way too late in the process to get the kind of care they wish they had gotten months earlier. And so that bill in specific, specifically, I believe, highly correlates if you really are concerned about protecting victims of sex trafficking it's almost like it's an automatic, you have to understand the importance of having legitimate, full access to reproductive health for these women. It's, it's key for them. It's just key. Uh, would Senator Kruger yield to another question? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to let you ask. Senator, you will yield, but we're going to try yes, and keep the comments specific to the present bill. Hmm. Uh, yes. Um, you know, last year the Senate passed the sex trafficking bill and passed this bill that we're on, that we're on today. Yes. Senator Jean Harris, why do you rise? Sorry, I'm sorry for interrupting, but I'd just like to support uh, Senator Libus's comments from earlier. We are now uh, getting way off Senator Robach's bill that, we're actually, uh, that is actually before us, and I would ask the President to enforce the germaneness rule. Senator Jean Harris, you make a good point. Senator DeFrancisco, you can keep your comments to the present bill. Uh, Senator Robach. I would be more than happy to. Uh, and uh, let's talk about Senator Robach's bill today that you are going to vote yes on. Do you know that bill passed last year? Yes. And uh, one other question, and I'll stop. Uh, do you believe that uh, it was worth women who didn't have the protections of the Senator Robach bill concerning the discrimination based upon domestic violence? that it was worth not providing them those protections for this last year because the Assembly wanted to hold out for 10 bills. Through you, Mr. President, when I first decided to run for the Senate, one of the issues I ran on was a bill called the Women's Health and Wellness Act. At the time, the Assembly had passed the bill approximately six times, if not seven years in a row, but the Senate would not pass the bill even though it was a bill to provide cancer screenings for breast cancer, cervical cancer, and ovarian cancer. But the Senate wouldn't pass it, even though the Assembly passed it. And why? Because that bill included birth control as well as cancer screenings. And so a very large coalition of organizations and health care providers throughout the state said, and seven years they had to say it, we're not going to give up on fighting for women's rights for reproductive independence and health. And even though it's a tragedy that the Senate would force us to wait seven years before it would pass cancer screenings, they said we need the whole package. And eventually, after I joined the Senate, we were successful in passing the full Women's Health and Wellness Act. I believe that's a parallel, parallel story to today. It's 2014. We have now been waiting, really since Roe v. Wade was codified in 1974, for New York State to modernize its law and to establish fundamental protections in our statutes that are our right as citizens of the United States, but ironically don't seem to be our right as citizens of New York State. So having waited since 1974, I believe that women and men in this state understand the critical nature of moving reproductive health legislation forward. And I think men and women of the state understand that every single issue that the Senator and I have been discussing and these bills all correlate together as a package that only in its totality assures the real protections women need. On the bill. Francisco. Uh, this, is, uh, this debate is much uh, the same, my comments on this debate is much the same on the one last week concerning uh, human trafficking. Uh, there are nine major bills, this being one of them, Senator Robach's bill, that I think are pretty important 
for women, including Senator Savino's bill that we passed without debate, an act to amend the labor law in relation to pro prohibit prohibition of differential pay because of sex. It is incredible to me that we would hold up the nine bills that are so essential to women in order, and even these nine bills are being voted on by those who think there should be a 10-bill package, and I think that's great. The problem is that they're being held up another year. I just wonder how many people are going to be discriminated by pay, discriminated uh, as a result of domestic violence, discriminated against, and harmed because of human trafficking, because we have a philosophical difference about one of the 10 points. And there is a true philosophical difference. Half a loaf won't do it, apparently, for some. 60% won't do it. 70%, 100% all or nothing. That's wrong, and I call on the Assembly, like I did last week, to take these bills up separately. The nine are going to pass. The nine will help women immensely. And there's another day to debate number 10, uh, which I will not support. So with that in mind, I would hope that uh, this bill passes, and I'm sure it will, probably unanimously, just like the one last week, and that reason prevail in this capital and give women protections this year. Don't wait another year because you want it all. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator. Senator Diaz. On the bill? On the bill, Senator Diaz. I, I, I don't even know if I'm going to be out of order. But I, I heard Senator Hosman a few minutes ago explaining why he was voting no, because the reason that he gave why he was voting no in a bill. Then I heard Senator Kruger stood up and said, I'm voting yes, because it's better to have something than nothing. That was before. But now, I hear Senator Kruger saying, it's all or nothing. So I don't know if I am reading Senator Kruger wrong, but if she said before that it was okay to vote yes when Senator uh, Horsman was saying reason why to vote no, and she said it's better to have something than nothing. But now with those 10 points, she said it's better to have nothing we're not going to have everything. So it's two different, uh, to me, it's two different explanations here. And I'm supporting, I'm, I'm also wanting to talk about the, congratulating Senator Rova, because when we talk about, when we, when we talk about domestic violence, and we're talking about that was Senator Kruger saying before. If we're talking about trying to protect women and, and stop anything that could hurt women, then I'm, I had to question myself and question what people saying. But, 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 but when, we try, when we're trying to, to impose a legislation where we will as non-physician to do abortion, in that, in that asking for violence, because we, if we say non-physician, a midwife could do something like that, I think that we're opening women for violence. We are not protecting women against violence. We open, we are saying that a pharmacist 
could do something like that. Then I, we, and we open and we and we open ourselves and the woman of the state for violence. So are we protecting? Talking about woman violence, trying to pro, to protect violence, or we are opening for more violence. So we have we have to be sure that if we are here trying to talk about stop violence or domestic violence, then we have to be sure what is, what is what we want. Because opening the, the floor or opening the door for that might create, that might create a dangerous situation for women, I, that is not, to me, that is not protecting women. That is throwing women to the wood. And that Senator Robert, thank you. And Senator De Francisco were talking about those nine points that are so important for women and that we should put and vote. We did it already. We we passed those nine votes. And some people that want to protect women that I that said that one woman and that want to do something for women because of one point. Senator De Francisco say they don't want the other nine. So I don't know. I don't know how is it that we are protecting women. Nine points, Senator Kruger and ladies and gentlemen, is better than nothing, as she said before to Senator Holtzman. Nine of the of the ten are very a lot better than nothing. I'm voting yes. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Senator Squadron. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Just a brief point of clarification. I do want to say I think it's a very positive bill. I appreciate Senator Robach's explanation of it. And I think it's an important bill on its own rights and its own merits. And I'm glad that we all feel that way. I hope Senator DeFrancisco proves correct that we have broad support for this bill today. Just to clarify, though, we're not talking about 9 out of 10 or whatever it is. This, this bill is, is not really a fully a version um, of the Women's Equality Act that we talk about. It, it is not a complete source of income discrimination bill. I think Senator Robach was clear and straightforward about that in his explanation. It really is focused on victims of domestic violence, which is a critically important group of people. It does push forward a study, but it doesn't do what we've done in New York City and in Nassau County, which is prohibit source of income discrimination in housing. Uh, that's the bill that passed this House with bipartisan support in 2010, passed the Assembly with unfortunately and incorrectly vetoed by Governor Patterson. It's a bill I still carry. And uh, you know, when we're talking about 1 out of 10 or 2 out of 10 or 9 out of 10, I do want to just be clear, as far as I'm concerned, this is a, a different, important, and meritorious bill. I'll be voting yes. And I hope we also have the opportunity to vote on the broader source of income discrimination bill. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator. Are there any other senators wishing to speak? Seeing none, the debate is closed. The Secretary will ring the bell. Read the last section. Section 5 decides to take effect on the 90th day. Call the roll. Adabo, De Francisco, Klein, Libeskell, Stewart, Cudden, Zeldin. Senator Parker to explain his vote. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and spraying my vote. I want to congratulate Senator Roebuck for an excellent bill. Um, you know, I think that I agree with some of my colleagues who, who think that the bill doesn't quite go quite far enough, but we certainly um, need this legislation. Protecting, there's nothing more important in our society than protecting you know, um, women, particularly uh, domestic violence victims and survivors. Um, but there's so, so much that needs to be done. And um, as been indicated both by Senator Kruger and others, and I'm certainly that Senator Roebuck's study will show, is that domestic violence isn't a crime that happens uncontextually. That in fact it happens within a particular context. And we in fact should be trying to protect um, all members of our society, but particularly women, um, from all of those contexts. I want to congratulate this chamber on evolution that I've seen since I've been here of not just coming here and debating bills and, and being outside and, and working through hard issues, but what we've started a tradition of is bringing bills to the floor that we know are important and, and giving them an up and down vote. And so as we talk about this debate about whether it's 10 separate bills or one bill, let's bring the omnibus women's equality package to the floor, let's give it a vote, and if people want to vote no, then let them vote no. And let the bill go up and down on its merit. We did that with the DREAM Act. And that, and that was seen to be fine. We did it with marriage a number of years ago. Let this be another opportunity to show everyone that we are not afraid, that we are here ready for the moment, and that we are ready to, to give people in this state an opportunity to see what their, where their representatives stand on the issues as it relates to women in the state of New York. Thank you very much. I'm Senator Parker to be recorded in the affirmative. Announce the result. Aye, he's 57. The bill is passed. Senator Libis? Let's go back to uh, today's active list and read the controversial calendar number 646, please. The secretary will read. Calendar number 646 by Senator Ritchie, Senate Print 1946A, an act to amend the vehicle and traffic law. Senator Kruger requests an explanation. Senator Ritchie. This bill would permit all terrain vehicles uh, weighing up to 1,500 pounds to be registered in New York State provided they are limited to three seats and have safety mechanisms such as a roll bar and seat belts. Uh, New York State is the only state that limits the weight that all-terrain vehicles can be registered uh, up to 1,000 pounds. Uh, in the past few weeks, I've received over 4,000 signatures on a petition from individuals in western New York, Hudson Valley, and the North Country asking that this bill be passed so that they can go back out Many of them, they can go back out as senior citizens and enjoy the trails and the outdoors and many individuals who are disabled. Ironically enough, the only individuals who are using the trails when an ATV is over 1,000 pounds right now are those out-of-state residents who actually register uh, their all-terrain vehicle in their state and then come to New York and they're able to ride on our trails when tax-paying citizens here are not allowed to. For you, Mr. President, if the sponsor would please yield. Yes. Senator Richie, will you yield? Yes. Thank you. So this would allow vehicles that are currently known as UTVs, utility vehicles, with weights up to 1,500 pounds to be treated as if they're ATVs for recreational purposes. Um, in non-industrial, non-farm purposes. Is that correct? This would allow an ATV that uh, is considered a utility vehicle um, up to 1,500 pounds to be registered and used as the same way an ATV is currently. Through you, Mr. President, if the sponsor would continue to yield. Do you continue yes, to Mr. yield? President. Yes. Can the sponsor explain to me the difference between our current ATVs, which are up to 1,000 pounds, and these new 1,500-pound ATVs, which my understanding is are now called UTVs or side-by-sides. Can, can she help me understand what's the difference besides the weight? Actually, uh, last week I had a number of dealers who came down and displayed their UTVs. Uh, generally, a UTV is a side-by-side. -side. Uh, 
in many times they are equipped with safety items that are not on ATVs such as roll bars and seat belts. Uh, during the display there was a UTV that was just under a thousand pounds next to one that was just over a thousand pounds. One could be registered, one could be, one was not allowed to be registered. The only difference was the one that's not allowed has automatic steering which actually makes it safer. Three, Mr. President. The sponsor will continue to yield. Yes. <coughs> the sponsor yields. Thank you. I actually also saw these um, vehicles because they were set up in on my way between the Capitol and the LOB. And I have to say, they looked like cars to me. I'm looking at some photos now. I know we're not allowed to display things here, but I'm looking at some photos here. Um, can the sponsor explain to me when you talk about the dry weight of a vehicle being 1,500 pounds, which is a 50% increase in the weight, given what these vehicles are set up to do and the number of people that they can hold, um, what would be the weight of these vehicles when, quote, fully loaded with the assorted of equipment that the companies offer for sale and up to three people? I, I guess, uh, Senator Kruger, I wouldn't really be able to tell you that because you could have a side-by-side -side with a fairly small person in it or an ATV with a fairly large person on it, and it might be the same. I, I can't really answer that question. Three, Mr. President, if the sponsor would continue to yield. Yes. She does. Thank you. Uh, would the sponsor agree that the research shows that a fully loaded UTV ATV with a dry weight of 1,500 pounds could have a weight of 3,000 pounds, which just for reference is approximately the size of a Toyota Corolla a car. Would, would the sponsor agree with me that it could be a situation where these vehicles would have the weight of a Toyota Corolla, which is 2,765 pounds? Senator Ritchie? I would say that was pretty unlikely, but I guess if you're on the opposite side of the issue, you could say that it could weigh 10,000 pounds because you can put any amount on there um, to, to prove your point that you wanted to. For the majority of people who are out there, many of them are senior citizens. They are individuals with disabilities who might have a cooler with a couple sodas in the back that are out on a ride uh, enjoying the trail system. Um, but that's just about all most people have, or uh, potentially a wench if they, you know, if uh, they have a flat tire. Through you, Mr. President, the sponsor would continue to yield. Yes. Thank you. So I appreciate her analysis that this may be, these vehicles may be used by senior citizens um, and others who currently can't use our smaller approved ATVs. Uh, my understanding is that these oh, yes. types of vehicles um, have different vehicle performance. They have different turning radiuses and maximum braking difference di distances. Um, and that they actually have a higher center of, center of gravity, um, resulting in it being easier to tip over or roll. Does the sponsor think there need to be any new limitations on these vehicles? Um, because of the differences in radius, braking, the potential risk of rolling um, and tipping over. Actually, I believe the people who are using the UTVs now um, are safer than they would be if they were on an ATV. Many times the UTVs uh, are on the trails, they're going slower on a ride. Just in St. Lawrence County, they put together a 50 mile UTV ATV trail and there's a lot of uh, interest not just in St. Lawrence County but across the state from individuals who want to go out, enjoy the outdoors and ride on uh, the trails. I know those who are on the other side of the issue like the environmentalists sent around probably one of those pictures that you're referring to that has a vehicle that's well over the 1500 pound radius. Also what was sent around was a uh, UTV in a, uh, uh, on a trail with it a, probably a four foot trench where they're um, looking like they're tearing it all up, which is actually a logging trail that a, a huge logging tractor trailer and skidder would be on. So I guess I would say that uh, UTVs 
generally are for people who want to go out and trail ride, who are going at a slower rate of speed than normal, who, um, who just want to go out and enjoy the outdoors. For you, Mr. President, the sponsor would continue to yield. Senator Ritchie, do you continue to yield? Yes. Yes. So this legislation would allow 50% larger dry load of the type of vehicles able to be used off-road, although they could still cross highways. Does this legislation place any new limitations on who can operate these vehicles? This legislation does not address that. Uh, the only thing it addresses is raising the weight and limiting it to three passengers and also making sure that there are safety requirements on there, um, which is kind of uh, interesting that uh, because New York is the only state that doesn't allow this right now, I don't think any one of us would think California is not environmentally friendly. California allows these vehicles and we don't have an issue. Uh, the state hasn't uh, slid into the ocean. Vermont, with the, the mountains we have there, well, probably everyone would agree, Vermont is fairly uh, environmentally friendly too, and there's no issues there. New York State is the only state that does not allow uh, these machines on their trails. For you, Mr. President, if the sponsor would continue to yield. Yes. Senator? Yes. So, the bill highlights increasing the weight of the vehicles, and there's a different type of chassis and center of gravity. Um, what speed do these machines go compared to the current machines that are only up to 1,000 pounds in New York? There is a different range of speeds, but uh, for many of the ATVs that are currently allowed to be registered, they can actually go faster than the newer uh, UTVs. Through you, Mr. President, if the sponsor would continue to yield. Yes. Thank you. Under current law, a 10-year-old child can operate an ATV in the same manner as an adult, as long as they have passed something called a safety training course. This legislation would authorize vehicles capable of carrying up to three passengers. So this new legislation, if I'm reading it correctly, would authorize a 10-year-old child to drive three additional 10-year-old children around on a 1,500-pound vehicle with adult, without adult supervision or additional regulation. Is that correct? We did not make any changes other than the weight limit. Through you, Mr. President, the sponsor will continue to yield? Yes. And under current regulations, that 10-year-old who had taken a course could also drive this vehicle across roads and highways. Would that be correct? We did not change any um, anything yeah. in the bill other than to, to allow the weight up to 1,500 pounds. Through you, Mr. President, the sponsor would continue to yield. Yes, Mr. President. So we've established that these vehicles can be as weighty as a car. Do they include airbags or reinforced windows, windows or undergo rigorous crash testing that we do require for automobiles of a similar weight? Well, I guess the best way to answer that is, uh, Senator Kruger, I would be more than glad to bring you up to my district any time to ride on the UTVs. And I'm pretty sure once you went on a ride on the trail in a side-by-side -side versus the older style ATVs, at the end, you would say that the UTVs are much safer and you would prefer to ride in them. Through you, Mr. President, on the bill. Senator Kruger on the bill. Thank you. I thank the sponsor for her answers. I also thank the sponsor for her invitation. I've actually ridden on utility vehicles um, on farm property. So I have no problem with the concept of these utility vehicles being used for industrial and agricultural purposes. I think that's actually what they are designed for. My dilemma here is I don't support allowing them to be used for recreational purposes in an off-road capacity by people who, yes, can be doing damage to the environment in certain areas. The senator is absolutely right when she says that environmental organizations have sent around memos opposing this. In fact, as far as I can tell, every environmental group I know has sent around memos saying this is a bad idea from an environmental perspective. 
But I started off the day deciding to focus on the risks to human beings from allowing these larger, heavier, more likely to roll over vehicles to be able to be used for recreational purposes um, off-road and to be allowed to be used by people as young as 10 years old. We would never let a 10-year-old get into a car and drive it on roads or off-roads. And yet, these vehicles are as heavy as cars, can carry as many passengers as cars, can have the same risks as riding a Jeep fast on a highway with rollover impacts and issues. But we would let 10-year-olds, because they took a safety course, even though our safety courses aren't mandated for this specific type of vehicle, not as of now, we would allow them to ride, to drive these vehicles. We would allow them to drive around other children in these vehicles on family-owned property, off family-owned property, across road and highways. I have to say, we might make this a law of New York State but I certainly hope there's no parent in New York who would think it'd be a good idea for their 10-year-old to have access to be the driver of these vehicles because the dangers are enormous. I pulled out an April 2014 report from the excuse me, Federal Consumer Product Safety Commission of the United States government. And in April 2014, they put out their 212 annual report of ATV-related deaths and injuries. And the data is fairly, to say disturbing would be um, an under-emphasis on this. ATVs have been getting bigger. They've been getting faster. Younger and younger children in state by state have been allowed to ride them. And not surprisingly, the rate of ATV-related emergency injury and the rate of death is shocking. In 2012, there were an estimated 107,900 ATV-related emergency department-treated injuries in the United States. An estimated 25% of these were children younger than 16 years of age. The increase in the estimated number of ATV-related emergency department-treated injuries just in one year, 2011 to 2012, um, went up, but it's been going up since 2001. The number of deaths from ATV injuries has also grown. It's true, more people are using ATVs, but they keep getting bigger and faster. And the only protective rule New York State has is that you have to wear a helmet. You don't have to wear other safety device, um, protective um, items or have any specific types of protective equipment on these machines. They are designed to be industrial use farm machines and other industry purposes. We use them in New York City at our parks as industrial vehicles. This is too dangerous a kind of vehicle to be supporting on the grounds that elderly and disabled people want to use them. I have to say, some of the exact concerns I have for children driving these vehicles would be my concerns if I thought about people with physical disabilities or with limited um, reaction time to be using these vehicles off-road. I understand that they are too heavy to float in water, so while ATVs, it turns out, the type of ATVs that we use here in New York State now actually have some level of ability to float back up to the surface, these types of machines are too heavy and they simply go down. My understanding is in winter, even though there are snowmobiles versus ATVs, that there are some people who like to use their ATVs going across icy lakes and rivers. <laughs> well, if there's actually enough buoyancy, that if, God forbid, the ice cracked, you could get out and get to shore. But a machine that's so heavy that it will not float at all, it will immediately sink, that could have 10-year-old drivers and ho or elderly and disabled riders is something that 
I envision as a serious safety issue for our state. I'm not opposed to ATVs. I am concerned that allowing UTVs side by sides with a weight of 1,500 without putting anything on it or anyone in it translates to basically saying, you can take cars and start driving through the woods or on icy lakes and rivers. Oh, and you can let your 10-year-old be the driver and the passengers. I think it would be a serious mistake for New York State to allow this law to go into effect. I respect that other states apparently have done this. I find myself saying this too many times as a legislator, but I keep going back to the rule of thumb that my mother taught me. If the other children are jumping off the bridge, you should still not jump off the bridge. I believe that allowing the use of these kinds of vehicles for recreational purposes instead of industrial and farm purpose is the equivalent of letting children fall off the bridge while driving one of these machines. I vote no, Mr. President. Thank you. Senator Nazolio. On the bill, Senator Nazolio. Mr. President, I deeply appreciate Liz Kruger's mom's advice. Uh, it's great advice. However, uh, tell that to the hiker who broke his leg. Active, avid environmentalist traveling on foot through the woods. Who's responding to that 911 call when no automobile can meet that truck, can meet that hiker? It's an ATV. And most of the volunteer fire departments and rescue teams across upstate deploy ATVs when they can afford one and are trying to allocate scarce resources so that they can purchase ATVs because that is the vehicle that is called upon most to rescue those hikers those environmentalists who are opposed to this bill, who are injured uh, through no fault of the woods, but are injured nonetheless and need the protection and the service that our volunteers are providing with ATVs. So, Mr. President, uh, this uh, debate against the vehicle uh, should be focused on those poor citizens who have some, by some way or another, been injured while recreating in the woods uh, and enjoying uh, some of the uh, beauty that we have in our state, and whether that be woods or, uh, Senator Kruger alluded to, uh, the lakes, uh, that yes, you need to be prudent. Uh, you wouldn't drive uh, an ATV on a frozen lake in late March uh, but during January and February, the ice is in many places in the Finger Lakes uh, and even in the, some of the bays of the Great Lake Ontario, more than a foot thick. And there are actual rescues that take place using ATVs, helping people who are stranded on the ice. So, Mr. President, I think that this bill by Senator Ritchie should be applauded. Uh, it makes a lot of sense. It's the rescue vehicle of the present and the future in our rural areas, and it's something that should be supported. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Libis. Mr. President, um, I want to speak on this bill because I just think that, um, in all due respect to my colleague, Senator Kruger, uh, those of us who own ATVs or UTVs, uh, um, do it for not only recreation, but as Senator Nazolio said, uh, two weeks ago a trooper was killed in my district. He was um, pulled somebody over on uh, the highway and somebody plowed right into him, killed him. Uh, unfortunately, this person uh, uh, had some, some mental illness and he told everybody that God told him he needed to kill somebody, and unfortunately that trooper happened to be the next one in line. Uh, the man took off into the woods, and they caught him on two ATVs because 
the terrain was so rough, um, they couldn't get him any other way, and they were able to climb the mountains and, and catch him. So they are used, as Senator Nazolio said, for emergency situations. But uh, Senator Kruger, I would say this to you. Um, those of us who own these vehicles and use them on trails and enjoy them, uh, it is a way of life for us in upstate New York where it is much more rural than uh, maybe it is in, in Manhattan. And I would say to you that I think the bus lanes on First Avenue are more dangerous, or the bicycle lanes. I've almost been killed crossing First Avenue because the bikes go flying by. And I'm serious, I'm dead serious. Uh, probably 50, 60 miles an hour. Uh, and I would protest to you that the UTVs and ATVs are much safer uh, than the people on those bikes, uh, the way they, they fly through. So uh, our way of life is, is a little different, and, and I'm not saying that your way is wrong or our way is right, but these, these vehicles are something that, uh, just like snowmobiles, uh, we have trails in upstate New York, and we, we like our snowmobiles, and we enjoy them. Uh, so what Senator Ritchie is doing here is, uh, is a good piece of legislation. It's something that is part of our way of life in upstate New York. Uh, many of my constituents, like the constituents of my colleagues, own these vehicles, they rent these vehicles, they enjoy these vehicles. So um, I would say to you that we could probably sit here and come up with 10 or 15 different things that are dangerous in life. Like I said, crossing First Avenue and hitting the bicycle lane to me is extremely dangerous. Um, I know that I take my life into my hands every time I do that. Uh, driving my car is extremely dangerous, especially, God forbid, if there's someone else on the road that's drunk. Um, we don't use these vehicles and try to create havoc. And I'm somewhat insulted that environmental groups would say that we're hurting the environment. There's more pollution in this country uh, from a whole host of different things that are going to do more damage to the environment uh, than any uh, UTV or ATV. So, Mr. President, this is a great bill. Uh, Senator Ritchie should be applauded, and it should pass this House, and uh, um, we should have the governor sign it into law. Thank you. Uh, Senator Griffo. Mr. President, thank you. Uh, I want to thank Senator Ritchie, too, for her leadership on this bill. And I have had the pleasure in the past to uh, discuss and debate this bill with Senator uh, Kruger. I was hoping that after all that conversation, we would have really had more of an opportunity to, to instill and educate you as to all the nuances of what this truly is. Because we all know cars are made to go up to speeds of 200 miles an hour, but people are encouraged to drive that speed. Cars have accidents. Things like that happen. And this bill really is a bill that talks about the definition of an ATV. So we're talking about all and every aspect of it, but really the essence of this bill talks about this definition of, of what it is and what it is not. So while I respect that we may have difference, opin difference of opinions on this issue, I think it's important that we continue to uh, do what is necessary in a state where we are trying to promote this state right now. And we don't want to send mixed messages to outdoor enthusiasts. On one hand, we advertise heavily to promote the wonderful opportunities that exist in particularly the North Country, the Tug Hill, or various other parts of the state. On the other hand, we want to discourage the use of the UTV or the ATV, which are popular, as has been indicated, with many older riders. So I think it's about time that we started giving the tourists who are trying to attract to this state a consistent message that our trails are open for business. We'd love to have you buy, register, and enjoy your side-by-side -side here in this state. So Senator Ritchie, thank you. And I think, uh, again, I respect differences of opinion. But if you look at this factually, uh, this is not only something that is governed by rules uh, and v the VTL in certain aspects, but also is an opportunity for this uh, state economy to continue to grow. I vote. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, when I was in the assembly, I remember an assemblyman putting in a bill to have New York divided into two states, New York City and the rest of upstate. And the reason that he was motivated, it was Assemblyman Davidson, I remember the debate. The reason he put that bill in, because he said, Many of the New York City metropolitan representatives 
do not understand upstate culture and way of life. And we have seen that repeatedly in some of the bills uh, when it came to uh, allowing some teenagers to hunt with their fathers using a gun, a bow and arrow, and now it's ATV machines. And um, I would like to just briefly, and, and the other speakers have hit on it, police, sheriff, emergency services, use these vehicles for recovery, at, recovery uh, rescue, uh, to track prisoners, uh, and uh, it's all positive. Uh, in the upstate culture, we're losing jobs. We can't create them as much as we try with this tough recession. Tourism and self-promotion to get people to come up, whether it's the wine country, whether it's to go on an ATV, whether it's to fish or ski. We need the people to come up to create economic vitality. Now, I always get a kick out of an elected official from the city having more, thinking they have more intelligence than the parent or the family that would allow a child of that family to use come on a motorcycle, use a snowmobile, or one of these recreational vehicles. Uh, believe it or not, the families upstate know how to take care of their children and know responsibly how to teach them for their culture and the things that they utilize. So, uh, for all of those reasons, People make intelligent choices of how they want to recreate. And sometimes accidents occur. Accidents occur on bicycles. They occur jaywalking in New York City. But we don't stop people from using bicycles. We don't stop people from walking across the streets in the city. So this is a very good bill. And I thank Senator Ritchie for putting it forward. She's trying to keep jobs. She's trying. The senator would yield to a question. Uh, can I just finish? The, and, and, and I would glad uh, to listen to your questions. So this is uh, just another way of people making intelligent choices, using the machines that they want to use, taking responsibility for their own actions, watching out for their children, and enjoying their culture. It also lends to uh, enhancing economic vitality and creating jobs. Thank you, Senator Ritchie. I vote yes. I'm ready now for Senator Kruger. Oh, from New York City, by the way. Yes, Senator Kruger. Thank you, Mr. President. If the senator would please yield. Of course. So. If he was listening to the earlier discussion, he heard me describe that these vehicles can be the weight of a Toyota Corolla, and he highlights that there may be cultural differences, and I'm sure there are cultural differences between all 63 of us on any given day for a lot of different reasons, and that parents want to be protective of their children and don't need regulations or laws by the state of New York telling them how to protect their children. Does the senator think we should allow 10-year-olds to have driver's licenses to drive Toyota Corollas if uh, they're from upstate New York? Senator Kruger, please could you repeat the last question? Your, does your the, head goes each way and not into the microphone. Does the senator think that 10-year-olds from upstate New York should be allowed to drive Toyota Corollas without driver's licenses? Is there no need I for those? I do not. I do not. Of course not. Through you, Mr. President, if this Senator would continue to yield. I do. So you think we should have driver's licenses, I'm assuming to protect both the driver of the vehicle and the other people who might be in the vehicle or in the area? You're talking of cars. The answer is yes. So through you, Mr. President, if the sponsor would continue to yield. I do. If a vehicle is called 
an ATV or a UTV or side by side, but weighs as much as a car, can go as fast as a car, why don't we think we should have similar rules applying to have the right to drive those? There are federal and state standards that, uh, that determine when a vehicle forms into the category of a car and a recreation vehicle. These ATV machines don't go on highways. They're normally in the woods where uh, uh -huh. they are not a chance of hitting people or, in my opinion, not disturbing the environment. That you're, you're comparing apples and oranges. Through you, Mr. President, on the bill again. Senator Kruger on the bill. Thank you. Just for the record, these vehicles can be driven across roadways and highways if they are registered. So yes, you would have some of the same risks as driving a car when you were moving in and out of the recreational off-road um, areas. Someone spoke and said, we need these vehicles for emergencies. I have no argument that they can and should be used for emergency purposes. The good news, they're already allowed under New York State law to be used by emergency service people and for emergencies, and that is specifically in statute. So there's nothing stopping um, our police, our fire, our EMTs, our ambulance services from using these types of vehicles for emergency responses. And actually, as I think was highlighted by one of the speakers, sometimes they already take these vehicles that are currently allowed and used in New York State for industrial and agricultural purposes as a response vehicle in emergency. So I have no objection to emergency service people using them. It's interesting that we were comparing what's dangerous in one place versus another. I would be thrilled if this House wanted to move forward with the Vision Zero package of safety for pedestrians, vehicles, and bikes in the city of New York. Because I agree with Senator Libis when he talks about the dangers that can be very clear and present in New York City streets. And I agree there's bigger environmental issues than the impact of off-terrain vehicles on specific parklands. I would love to see in the next four days, three days now that we have left in session, us to pass important global warming legislation, important legislation that could really deal with some of the big picture global environmental dangers we face because it isn't just about a specific type of vehicle on a specific kind of land. It's much, much bigger than that. Unfortunately, we don't get to those kinds of bills, and I think there's still time to. It doesn't change my position on this bill. I will continue proudly to have my nickname that I appreciate from some of my colleagues of calling me Senator New No Fun, because some of the things that some people think are just good fun I think are really dangerous for children, and I will continue to speak out from that perspective. So I'll continue with my no vote. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator. Are there any other senators wishing to speak? Seeing none, the debate is closed. The secretary will ring the bell.
Will all senators please proceed to their seats so we can go get on with the vote? Order. Thank you, Gavin. Will all senators please return to their seats? Read the, read the last section. Section 2 of the statute take effect on the 30th day. Call the roll. Adabo, De Francisco, Klein, Libeskell, Stewart, Cousins, Zeldin. Announce the results. Announce the results. Ration of calendar 646. Those recorded in the negative are Senators Adabo, Avella, Bresland, Carlucci, Diaz, Delan, Gianaris, Gibson, Hoyleman, Kennedy, Klein, Kruger, Latimer, Laval, Marcelino, O'Brien, Peralta, Perkins, Rivera, Serrano, Squadron, Stavisky, Stewart Cousins, and Katchik. Ayes 33, nays 24. The bill is passed. There will be an immediate meeting of the Finance Committee in room 332. An immediate meeting of the Finance Committee in 332. And could we please return to motions? Could we have some order in the House? Could we return to motions and resolutions, please? Motions and resolutions?
Yeah, we'll see. Mr. President, on behalf of Senator Hannon, on page 20, I offer the following amendments. Kill number 565, Senate Prince 7027 BNS, as said, bill retain its place on the third reading calendar. So ordered. Mr. President, on behalf of Senator Nazolio, I wish to call up his bill, Senate Prince 7734, recalled from the Assembly, which is now at the desk. Secretary will read. Calendar number 1224 by Senator Nazolio, Senate Prince 7734, an act amend the penal law. Yeah, I'm going to. I now move to, uh, move to reconsider the vote by which this bill is passed. Call the roll on reconsideration. Adabo De Francisco, Klein, Libeskell, Stuart Cudden, Zeldin, ayes 57. Mr. President, I offer up the following and amendments. Are accepted. What is your... Senator Valeski has a motion. Senator Valeski. Thank you, Mr. President. On behalf of Senator Savino, on page 22, I offer the following amendments to calendar 623. Senate Bill 6617A, and as it said, bill retain its place on the third reading calendar. So ordered. Senator Libis. I was offering to give her a ride on my UTV. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're okay with her amendment? Mr. President, is there any further business at the desk? There's no further business at the desk. Thank you, Mr. President. If there's no further business, I move that the Senate adjourn until Tuesday. June 17th at 10.30 a.m. On motion, the Senate stands adjourned until Tuesday, June 17th at 10.30 a.m.